Well, we've had a bit of a retrace here over the weekend. Hope you're all enjoying yours wherever you are. Uh, hopefully it's better than crypto is because crypto has certainly been bleeding pretty aggressively. You can see the past week here, Bitcoin down 7.7%, Ethereum down a bit over 10%. You've got some really big retraces from assets like Uniswap down over 37% in the past week. And the stories pretty much continue across the board. Uh, mostly between the 20 to 37 to 40 percent ish range out there. So there's a few exceptions. Tuncoin continues to crush now a top 10 market cap asset. But the point is, uh, we've had a, a sizable drop. Many people are attributing it to the Israel and Iran conflict uh, and the mention of war that is going on that could be bringing in other countries. We're obviously not a political channel here, so we won't be getting too into those stories. I'm sure you have plenty of sources that can catch you up on it more. But the reason it's relevant to crypto is because when it comes to these types of real world crises, we often see underreactions, overreactions, market shifts uh, as a result of fear or excitement due to anything that could potentially impact the economy, which crypto is very much a part of the world economy these days, uh, unlike maybe the perception from a decade ago. But, you know, with the market caps being in the hundreds of billions of dollars like it is now collectively, there's uh, certainly a major impact when these types of stories start to surface. So now that we're here, um, you know, the initial thing we did was check to see just how big of a drop it was. And it got as low as 61.5K. Um, and <clears throat> as of the time of this recording, it's back up back up to 64.7K. But, um, you know, we were planning to put this poll out anyways this weekend. Uh, if you watched our live stream, we're kind of talking about how the whatever the latest shift was, that tends to be where things go. And right now it's no exception. The crowd is not overwhelmingly, but pretty sizably believing that there won't be any all-time high for Bitcoin hitting before the April 19th halving, which is now just five days away from the time I'm recording this quick video. Um, I expect it'll probably shift a little bit as a little more time elapses, but expect that the answer is probably going to be no from the majority of the poll answers unless you know, I go to bed here and I wake up to see Bitcoin back at 70K, then you start to see a bunch of people saying yes to this question. So uh, there's a lot of recency bias when it comes to this. But of course, there's a lot of fear, not just because prices retrace, but because of the real world issue going on that could be impacting world economies over the next week uh, and put a damper on the Bitcoin halving that's going to undoubtedly happen in five days. So we also can look at the watch lists here. Let me make this a little larger and you can see, yeah, everything's getting hammered, especially the ones that have recently done well. So like meme coins, for example, they actually had a good previous, um, I don't know, seven ish days. But over the past couple, as Bitcoin started to retrace, they've been hammered. And that's why you see such a low return here. Layer two is also getting crushed social assets getting really hammered more than any other sector, albeit there's only a, a nine asset sample so size here. Um, but yeah, the point is across the board, you're seeing a lot of drops. Binance chain, surprisingly, not so much. So that that is quite interesting to me. Um, maybe a lot of assets that are on the BSC and Binance chain have been a little more insulated from this type of uh, FUD going on. But uh, Regardless, you know, layer ones, liquid staking derivatives, also not quite as impacted as the others. And I also want to take a look at exactly how scary this is, according to the key stakeholders out there. And yeah, it doesn't look like they're fearing. In fact, they are accumulating right now. You can see that just in the past 24 hours through this drop that happened um, on the 12th and 13th, um, we're Still, we, we saw about a 9,511 Bitcoin accumulation from coins or wallets, I should say, with 10 to 10,000 BTC in them. 
so that's a pretty good sign. You know, normally when you see this kind of drop, you'll see that there's a little bit of a decline from these large sharks and whales, but they're actually scooping some up as others are showing fear. You can see the overall amount of wallets is continuing to climb, uh, which we talked about on Friday's stream. There's a little bit of FOMO going on in anticipation of the having coming up on the 19th. But, you know, with this drop, I would actually expect it to slow down. I think a lot of people are going to fear uh, markets potentially going below 60K over the next week or so, even through the halving. Um, and I would also keep an eye on the funding rate here. That's the other very important note. Now you'll see if I highlight Binance here, it's pretty much flat, indicating there's not really any uh, notable ratio whatsoever between longs dominating shorts or shorts dominating longs. I do see a bit on the Deribit side. This was actually the biggest short spike that we saw uh, in over six months, believe it or not. It may not look like much because they're on their own axis, but yeah, this was actually a pretty big sign of fear. Uh, and I would I would keep in mind that if you start to see, you know, Binance's funding rate following suit because they have more impact than a smaller exchange like Deribit, then you're really in a good position to add on more if probability matters to you. Nothing's a guarantee in this analysis, but if you see a big drop uh, in price followed by a bunch of shorts, yeah, that's that's usually a good time to scoop things up as uh, others are are dumping for fear of prices going lower. And then the last quick thing I want to look at is the actual amount of social mentions. As I mentioned, the crowd overwhelmingly seems to be attributing this drop to the war uh, or the potential of war, I should say. It's a little too early to um, definitively say that's what's going on. Maybe that'll change in the next couple of days. But as of now, it's the fear of war and uh, Iran uh, claiming that some drones and missiles are heading toward Israel's direction. Uh, I won't go further than that because I, I am not, uh, I'm a crypto analyst and I'll leave it at that. But the point is the crowd is reacting to it. And as the price is dropped, you could even argue it happened um, right at the tip before the drop happened or in the midst of the tip. People immediately, when they see a drop like this, they go, okay, why did this happen? And of course, the mentions of the war uh, and the the missiles and drones out there were uh, flooding the news right at this time. So naturally, people are saying, "Okay, this has to be why." Um, let's be let's be very careful at this time. And you can even see social dominance went way up as prices bounced. So what you want to be looking for right now is big spikes in social dominance. They're going to be uh, they're going to be indicators of a price direction shift for at least the next few days or weeks if this ends up being a big story, which most people seem to be anticipating. Look for big spikes like this because they're going to be a sign of FOMO when prices are going up or FUD when prices are going down. Um, you know, I, this, the news, I guess, officially started on uh, the 12th when people were starting to speculate about some war going on and uh, Israel was getting back in the news. And of course, when the price dropped happened, that's when everyone suddenly um, attributes, you know, why markets are getting volatile to the Iran and Israel conflict. So we have a couple of things to compare it to. You know, we can look back at, for example, Russia or Ukraine. If we go back to uh, 2022, we'll just say January until April is fine. That's when it all kicked off. And you can see quite clearly, big dump right here, followed by a huge spike in social dominance. Prices start to rebound, a little more dominance. It goes down again. And then you can see it finally starts to trail off. And as it trails off, prices explode upwards. So these, these kinds of negative stories, at least in the past, have kind of almost worked as negative correlations. High spikes um, often mean that the price temporarily goes down, and as people stop talking about it so much, prices go up. Not always the case, but you can also look at um, Israel. Actually, we'll just look specifically at Palestine, because that will just isolate when 
that news was really starting to come to a head. Um, I'm going to uh, around like July through, we'll say October of 23, a little, we'll say November. And there you go. It, it happened right at the beginning of October. And you can see initially prices go down. And then as they continue to go down, you see one more huge spike here. That was obviously a big news story that happened on October 22nd uh, related to the Israel-Palestine conflict. And then prices explode. I wouldn't say this was the reason, but you get the idea. Prices go the opposite direction of um, the crowd's interest in this conflict. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just takes an initial dump from a a new story that causes fear to start seeing something like this, where whales and sharks see the opportunity to collect more at, at that uh, dropped price value and then prices rebound. It's a tale as old as time. There's tons of other examples. I can go over many in other videos, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over that. I, it appears that there's not nearly as much to fear on chain as you would expect, the first thing I like to look at is um, whether big key stakeholders are are fearful of some big news story. And right now, I don't see any sign of that at all. We'll check in, uh, you know, over the next 24 to 48 hours to see if this changes, and of course, update you on our several social platforms. But hopefully, this was helpful. Stay safe out there. Don't overextend in either direction, and try not to overreact to anything in crypto. Um, and um, other than that, I wish you all well, and I'll talk to you all soon.